Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In the last video, we had an introduction about enzymes. Today, we will classify the enzymes and we will learn how to name them, the nomenclature. So with that said, now let's get started. This is my biochemistry playlist. Please watch these videos in order. When you lump some amino acids together, you get peptides, tons of polypeptides together, and you get proteins. The protein has primary, secondary, tertiary, and sometimes quaternary structure, as we have discussed before. And here's a comparison table. Pause and review. When you join protein with something else, a prosthetic group, you call this a conjugated protein. Enzymes are like airplanes. They help you go to your destination faster. They increase the speed or the rate of the reaction. They lower the activation energy. Of course, they depend on pH and temperature. They are specific for a particular reaction or a class of reactions, as you will discover today. They do not change New York. We do not throw them in the trash once you reach your destination. They do not change the equilibrium position. They do not change the thermodynamics or the overall free energy. The enzyme is a shortcut. It lowers the activation energy and therefore boosts the speed of the reaction. But the destination is still the destination. Enzymes are catalysts. They lower the activation energy without changing the overall energy of the reaction. Enzymes are specific. This is a fact. They only catalyze one reaction or one group of reactions. An example of an enzyme that catalyzes one reaction is urease. Why do you call it urease? Because it works only with urea. It breaks down urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. When you study medicine later, you will learn about some bacteria that are urease positive, i.e. they possess the enzyme urease, such as the famous Helicobacter pylori, which can lead to peptic ulcer disease. How about enzymes that are specific to one group of reactions? This is chymotrypsin. Chymotrypsin can break down proteins or polypeptides by breaking down peptide bonds around phenylalanine, tryptophan, or tyrosine. So it's not just one thing. It's a group of things within the same category. Do you remember when we talked about the peptide bond before? All right, let's try to make a peptide bond. Okay, we're trying to join two amino acids together. And you make a lovely peptide bond between them. And of course, Wota has left the chat. This was an amino acid. This was another amino acid. But now you have a dipeptide and Wota. And what's that? A peptide bond. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to make the peptide function, you need to make the bond stable. If you want it to be digested, you need to break it down. How do I break down the peptide bond? By hydrolysis. What is hydrolysis? To break down and to cleave in the presence of water. In that sense, trypsin and chymotrypsin are hydrolytic enzyme. They cause hydrolysis. Look at that. We will add water and this will help us break the peptide bond. Hashtag hydrolysis. Hashtag hydrolase enzyme. So hydrolase means what? Ace means enzyme and hydro means water. Let's talk about six categories of enzymes. We'll talk about oxyreductases, transferases, hydrolases, lyase, isomerase, and ligase. As you see, all of them end in ace. If you see an ace on your exam, odds are they are talking about an enzyme. Hey, medicosis, does the enzyme have to have ace as a suffix? No, it doesn't have to, but it usually does. And here's a pro tip. When I say kinase, I mean it's going to add a phosphate. Phosphatase is something to remove the phosphate. Let's start by oxyreductases, enzymes for oxidation reduction reactions. What the flip is oxidation? Oxidation in chemistry could be one of three things. It could be a gain of oxygen, oxidation. A loss of hydrogen is also oxidation. A loss of a negative electron. When you lose the negativity, you become a positive thing called oxidation. Conversely, reduction is the exact opposite. Reduction is loss of oxygen, gain of hydrogen, or gain of electron, which is negative. In an oxidation-reduction reaction, the electron donor 
is somebody who donates a negative electron. Oh, donating a negative is reduction. Yeah, that's why we call it reductant. Conversely, an electron acceptor is an oxidant. Because when you accept an electron, you will take the electron away from the other guy, rendering him oxidized by removing the negativity from him. Oxidation reduction reactions will involve cofactors like NAD and NADP, as we will discuss later in metabolism. But for now, I want you to remember that the word dehydrogenase, reductase or oxidase means an enzyme involved in oxidation reduction reaction. After oxyreductases, let's talk about transferases. If you remember my video about vitamin B6, we talk about transamination reaction. A transaminase, like AST or ALT, this is aspartate aminotransferase and alanine aminotransferase are transferases of amino, and we call them transaminases because they transfer the amino group. For example, if you take that amino group from L-glutamate, the L-glutamate now has lost its amino. L-glutamate will become alpha-ketoglutarate. Okay, metacosis, I took the amino group. Who should I give it to? Give it to the alpha-keto acid so that it becomes an alpha-amino acid. Example, ALT will convert alanine to pyruvate. AST will convert aspartate to oxaloacetate. Both require vitamin B6 as a cofactor. Next, what's a hydrolase? ACE is an enzyme, hydro means water. It's an enzyme that breaks down in the presence of water. Hydrolases could be lipases, peptidases, nucleases, or phosphatases. Lipase is an enzyme that breaks down lipid in presence of water. Peptidase breaks down peptides in presence of water. Nuclease breaks down nucleic acid. Phosphatase breaks down phosphate. So I hope you realize that kinases add phosphate and they are examples of transferases. They transfer a phosphate group to you. They give you a phosphate. That's a transferase. Conversely, phosphatase, which removes a phosphate, is a hydrolase. It breaks down your phosphate. It takes the phosphate away from you in the presence of water. What's a lyase then? A lyase is something that breaks down but in the absence of water, unlike the hydrolase, lyase goes both way. So I can break down X into A and B, or I can bind A and B together to give you X again. Lyase goes both ways. It's a reversible reaction. Oh, by the way, when I use lyase to build up, here you can call it something else. You can call it synthase. And if you need ATP for the reaction, we can call you synthetase. The T is for the adenosine triphosphate. What's an isomerase? It's an enzyme that will convert you to your isomer. Could be a stereoisomer or a constitutional isomer. What's a ligase then? It's an enzyme that ligates. To ligate is to tie. For example, here is a DNA fragment, another DNA. Or who is going to bind them together and tie them together to make a singular long strand ligase. And these are the six categories of enzymes that we study today. I know this was dry and theoretical, but trust me, when we study metabolism together, all of this is going to make sense. I know many a student who struggles through biochemistry because they do not grasp these basic facts. If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course at metacosisperfectionetics.com. I also have a general pharmacology course talking about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, as well as a brand new surgery high yields course. We'll continue talking about enzymes in the next video. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.